Well, we're going now to the uh, astronaut quarters into the uh, suit-up room. So uh, tell us uh, who we're seeing and what they're doing. Well, that's the commander, uh, Steve Frick. He's a Navy captain, and the fact that he's in there, and there's the pilot, Al Poindexter, also a Navy captain, means that the weather brief is over. While some of the other MSs were getting suited up in here, the, the pilot and commander, and sometimes the MS-2 will be in there getting the weather brief. There's uh, Al giving us a wave and a thumbs up. Uh, this is his first flight. I know he's excited. Uh, there's Leland Melvin. Uh, he's on the telephone, looks like, probably saying hi to friends or family. This is his first flight also. Now, they've been in these suits several times, obviously, through training, and then uh, their actual launch suit, they've done some pressure checks and suit fits uh, prior to today just to make sure that things are, are as they should be. Uh, and then today they'll get that last check uh, before heading out to the pad. There's Stan Love. This is his first flight also. We do have uh, some new flyers. Uh, he's a Ph.D. Uh, in astronomy. Uh, he's from Oregon. He's a, a great guy, and he'll be doing the third spacewalk while he's up there. There's Hans Schlegel uh, from ESA. He's uh, from Germany. Looks like he's probably already completed his checks, and he's sitting there on cooling. Uh, this will be his second flight. He flew on uh, D2, I think, back in about 1993, and he'll be doing uh, two of the spacewalks. There's Leo Hearts. Uh He's a general in the French Air Force. And this is his second flight. It's his first shuttle flight. He went up to Mir uh, back in 98. And there's Rex. This is Rex's second flight. Matter of fact, uh, he flew with Steve Frick, the commander. This is both their second flight, and they flew together on STS-110. Uh, Rex is an Air Force colonel, and he's the lead spacewalker on this mission. He'll be doing all three spacewalks. Uh, obviously, they have done this before, uh, not only in the practice test that they do before launch, but also they were here in December going through this, as uh, everyone remembers. And so there's definitely some familiarity uh, with what they're going through this morning. You'll see several other people in the room. Uh, there are uh, flight surgeons, which are monitoring the health of the astronauts. Uh, there's the suit-up techs, which we see right there. And then there'll be uh, some other support uh, astronauts in there, and usually a little bit of management as uh, we get the last checks done before they head out to the pad. Now, some of the equipment that they're hooked up to, what, what is that telling them? What is it doing? Well, uh, one of the things, when they do the pressure check, when they put their helmet and gloves on and close their visor, they're just checking to maintain uh, that the suit maintains pressure. It's a full pressure suit that they need for launch. Uh, there's also uh, communications uh, that they hook up just like they would be in the orbiter to make sure the co uh, comm is working. And then finally, there's cooling, uh, much like we have on board. Uh, those suits can get pretty hot, so we keep them cool uh, through uh, liquid cooling garments. It's a great view of Atlantis. Uh, I think folks probably know that uh, we got a reprieve from uh, retiring Atlantis, and it has the opportunity to do maybe up to three more flights, it'll get the new station to shuttle power transfer system, or SPITS as we call it, which allows it to, to do a little bit longer dock missions with the space station. So that was good news. And here they come. This is uh, actually coming out of the suit-up room in crew quarters. And you see the Commander Steve Frick on the right, and there's Al Poindexter, the rest of the crew coming in. This is their chance to say bye to the folks in crew quarters. There they are. That's all the support personnel that have uh, taken great care of them over the last couple of days. And then we also saw uh, Steve Lindsay in the blue flight suit. Uh, there's uh, Brent Jett kind of in the uh, left rear in the coat and tie. He's the head of uh, flight crew operations. And they'll head down the elevator. And uh, once they come out the other side, we'll just kind of watch and, and let them greet the crowd out there. So I think uh, just, uh, what, three flights down on the crew quarters? And here they come.
Well, they're getting him board the uh, Astrovan, and that's uh, about, what is it, 20 minutes or so out to the pad? It's probably about that. Uh, they have a police escort, and you'll probably see helicopters above them with SWAT uh, security. And they usually get them out there a little quicker than if uh, you and I were driving. It's not a bad ride at all. They do have cooling for their suits inside the Astrovan. Uh, chance to get a last drink of water on there. And it's a uh, pretty yeah. exciting ride. There they go. Well, we'll pick up uh, with them again at the launch pad, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to follow them some as they're uh, on the way out there. They're now at the uh, south end of the Launch Control Center where they're stopping to load off some other members of the senior management team who will be coming up here to the firing room. And uh, Jerry Ross, the uh, manager of Flight Crew Operations Directorate, This is Shuttle Launch Control, T minus two hours, 37 minutes, 37 seconds and counting. Final inspection team has completed their work and left the launch pad. They'll be delivering a report to STS-122 Atlantis Launch Director Doug Lyons and to the uh, engineering team. Crew now getting off the Astrovan. They may... Stop and take a look around for a minute before they head up to the orbiter access arm. Astronauts now at the orbiter access arm level where they will prepare to enter the white room. They'll be doing that one or two at a time. Otherwise it gets a bit crowded, but uh, they enjoy looking out from the orbiter access arm and around the fixed service structure at the space shuttle and view around Complex 39. As we mentioned, they, uh, the astronauts usually like to wait outside the white room, just take a look around and uh, have as few people or as absolutely necessary inside the white room since that's a lot smaller than it looks on TV. Here's our commander, Steve Frick, being helped with his flight suit. 